Hey, Dr. Gooden back with the last video in the series on the wrist and the hand joints. Today we're talking about the muscles of the wrist and hand. Okay, let's go learn about our bodies. Okay, so muscles of the wrist and hand. Now this section can be challenging for students because there are so many small muscles um, in the forearm. They're hard to palpate sometimes and differentiate from each other. But luckily the names give us really big clues as to what each of these muscles does. So as far as the extrinsic muscles go, and remember we are going to focus on those extrinsic muscles, we have six muscles that move the wrist but not the fingers or the thumb and they're grouped into wrist flexors and wrist extensors. So of the flexors, we have flexor carpi radialis. Now carpi, remember, refers to the wrist. And we know what flexor means, so flexor carpi radialis must mean that it's a wrist flexor on the radial side. Flexor carpi ulnaris, so a wrist flexor on the other side, and then palmaris longus. Um, and then we have three wrist extensors. Extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. And extensor carpi ulnaris. It seems like, we haven't seen pictures of these muscles yet, but it seems like the names will be indicative of where they actually cross the wrist. And then we have nine muscles that are primary movers of the phalanges but they are also involved in wrist joint actions. And that's because these muscles are on the forearm and those tendons are running in the carpal tunnel over to your fingers or on the dorsal surface of your, your hand to the fingers, but they cross the wrist. So we have the flexors, flexor digitorum, now digit, remember that means finger. Flexor digitorum superficialis, so that will be probably closer to the surface. Flexor digitorum profundus, profound or deep, deep to the superficialis, and flexor pollicis longus. Now pollicis means thumb. And then we have a whole range of extensors. So we have extensor digitorum, that will extend all of the digits. Extensor indices, which extends just your pointer finger or your index finger. Extensor digiti minimi, or minimi, not really sure how to say it, but that's your pinky finger extensor. Extensor pollicis longus, and that will be for your thumb, remember pollicis means thumb. And extensor pollicis brevis, another thumb extensor, but longus versus brevis, long versus brief or short. And then we have an adductor of the thumb and wrist, and that will be, ab, uh, sorry, an abductor, that's abductor pollicis longus. Now generally all the wrist flexors as I've said in previous videos have their origins on the anteromedial aspect of the proximal forearm and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So right in this zone and we have that flexor wad you can see in the picture um, but also on yourself coming down on the anterior aspect and crossing the wrist on that anterior aspect. Okay, so the flexors first. Flexor carpi radialis, you can probably tell that it does flexion of the wrist. And it's also going to do abduction or radial deviation of the wrist because it's on this radial side. And it will also do weak pronation of the forearm just because its fibers kind of wrap around to this side. I drew it a little more extremely than it is, but if when they shorten, they're going to pull that radius this way. Palmaris longus, remember palmaris longus, if you put your thumb into opposition and touch your pinky and then flex your wrist, you're going to see that palmaris longus tendon pop up. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, it's kind of a weird motion to do, but um, you can see that tendon pop up and it, does wrist flexion as well as weak flexion of the elbow because it's, remember, it's crossing that elbow. So a lot of these wrist flexors, flexors will also contribute to um, elbow flexion. Flexor carpi ulnaris, so this is going to flex the wrist 
on the ulnar side. And we see it does just that, inserting down there on the ulnar side. So it will also do adduction of the wrist or ulnar deviation. And then again, we have weak flexion of the elbow. Now the extensor muscles, extensor carpi ulnaris. So it will extend the wrist and cross on the ulnar side. And we see it on this posterior aspect crossing on that ulnar side. So it does extension as we thought, and it also does ulnar deviation or adduction of the wrist, moving the wrist towards the midline in anatomical position, as well as weak extension of the elbow. So previously, I kind of lied to you a little bit when I said that Anconius and triceps uh, brachii were the only two muscles that did extend, uh, extension. We also have weak extension coming from the um, elbow extensor, sorry, from the wrist extensor muscles. And here's extensor carpi radialis brevis, so it's an extensor of the wrist on the radial aspect, and it's a little shorter. And here it is crossing that radial side, so it does wrist extension, abduction, and weak elbow flexion. Then we have extensor carpi radialis longus, which extends the wrist on the radial side, and it's a bit longer. Notice that it has this higher um, origin. It's more proximal than brevis. And it also extends the wrist, abducts the wrist, uh, weak flexion of the elbow, and weak pronation to neutral if you're fully supinated. Similar to brachioradialis, when you are fully supinated, that's going to stretch these fibers and shortening them um, concentrically will bring you back into a neutral position. And now flexor digitorum superficialis. Remember there's also a profundus which is deep to this. This flexes the fingers, so we're looking at this from an anterior aspect. It's running um, on the anterior aspect of your wrist, up your palm, and then flexing the fingers. It flexes the wrist and the fingers, and also contributes to elbow flexion. And then we have the profundus, which is deep to that, and it is flexion of the four fingers at each of these three joints, the MCP, um, IP, and DIP joints. Sorry, PIP. MCP, I'll write it. MCP, PIP, and the DIP joints, as well as wrist flexion. And here we have the flexor pollicis longus, and again, flexion of the thumb, flexion of the wrist. So hopefully by now you're connecting that anything that does finger flexion also does wrist flexion. Anything that does uh, finger extension also does wrist extension. And then here we also though have abduction of the wrist because it can pull it into that uh, radial deviation. And here we have extensor digitorum. So now this is a finger extensor and it extends your fingers, does elbow extension because it's coming on this anterior, this posterior aspect of the elbow and uh, wrist extension. Extensor indices is just an extensor of your pointer finger. So every time you point at something, that's extensor indices. And it can also contribute to weak supination. So if you imagine these fibers short shortening, it's going to pull you into supination if you're leading with that finger. And extensor digiti minimi, which is an extensor of your pinky muscle. So every time you sip tea, this is the British tea sipping muscle. The Queen of England has a very pronounced extensor digiti minimi. You can see it in videos, just, just you know, slow it down to quarter speed and look really close. You can see it just pops out. And then we have extensor pollicis longus, um, extends the pollicis or the thumb, as well as extension of the wrist, abduction of the wrist, and weak supination. Again, if, if we just remember the line of action of these, of these muscles, and imagine them shortening, you can tell whether it will do supination or pronation because it's going to 
kind of pull your hand in that direction um, if it's anchored on the forearm. And abductor pollicis longus. So this abducts the thumb, abducts the wrist as well, because if it's abducting the thumb and it keeps shortening, it's going to continue pulling over into abduction. It can extend the thumb as well at the CMC joint. There's weak supination of the forearm from a pronated position and weak flexion of the wrist. So that wraps up the muscle actions of the wrist and the forearm. Now what I would recommend is to not try to memorize these off the bat, but rather try to really parse out what the names mean. Remember that things like carpi mean wrist, and uh, things like digit mean finger, and things like ulnaris or radialis means on the ulnar side or the radial side. And then you will develop a framework for these muscles. And so now when you try to memorize them, the framework is going to help you out. And you can put them into different bins of, oh, does it you know, originate on the medial aspect or the lateral aspect? And does it cross anterior or posterior? And that will help you remember these muscles in groups and to organize them and categorize them. And then when you memorize them, uh, that will just be the icing on the cake. Okay, I hope you found that video helpful on the wrist and hand uh, muscles. If you had any questions though, leave them down below and I'd love to try to answer them for you as best as I can. Um, the next video in this series is going to be about the hip complex. So the hip and pelvis, specifically the bony landmarks of that region. So head right on over here to check out that video. If you missed any of the other videos in this series, go ahead and check them out on this playlist. As always, I'm Dr. Gooden, professor of kinesiology and sports scientist, trying to make kinesiology concepts understandable and applicable. Thanks for watching.